the last decade was a fantastic decade for the NBA. It really saw incredible growth in fandom nationally and internationally, and it had great storylines. I mean, the surprise of the Dallas Mavericks making it to the NBA Finals and winning it for Dirk Nowitzki, the, the retirements of Kobe Bryant and Allen Iverson and Tim Duncan, and it was such an amazing decade, those don't even make our top 10 stories of the decade. Let's get into it. Here are our top 10 stories of the decade for the NBA. At number 10, the Derrick Rose Saga, 2011 MVP on top of the world. Here come the Bulls as a threat to win it all and be a powerful team for this entire decade. And in 2012, he tears his ACL. It's the start of a series of knee injuries for Rose that frankly, it's not till just the very end of the decade where he comes back as a solid role player that he gets back to being anywhere near himself. It's a devastating story. It would have changed the decade and it was just kind of hard to watch happen. Number nine, the James Harden trade. Like the biggest what if we have seen maybe ever in basketball, but certainly in the last decade. I mean, this was a team that in 2012 was in the NBA Finals with Russell Westbrook, with Kevin Durant, with James Harden, and you thought this was gonna continue. You were gonna see them there almost every year. They never got back. James Harden gets traded away in a money move. A few years later, Kevin Durant heads to the Warriors. Now Russell Westbrook's not even there and they're about to start a rebuild. It's a big what if. Can you imagine how many titles they might have had in Oklahoma City if there was just a way to keep this whole group together for a few more years? At number eight, Adam Silver becomes your NBA commissioner. Look, David Stern was a dictator. He did things his way. He was an old school CEO. Adam Silver came in and changed the tone. He's a new school CEO. Wants to get consensus on everything. Willing to listen to people. Open mind about new ideas. Except did anything really change in terms of style and things the NBA would have done? I'm not sure that we've seen that, at least not yet. We'll see if there's a midseason tournament or not. But right now, Adam Silver brings a different attitude to the NBA, and that's really worked for them. Number seven, Russell Westbrook averages a triple-double for an entire season and then does it again the next season. Look, Russell Westbrook is a physical force of nature, maybe the greatest athlete of the decade in the NBA, certainly one of the great athletes this game has ever seen, and he just took it upon himself after Kevin Durant left and they didn't have other scoring options to do it all, and he did it all. Yeah, he hunted the numbers a little bit. That's fine. It was an incredible feat. We hadn't seen it since Oscar Robertson in the 60s. It was one of those things we never thought we'd see that broken. It was what an incredible job by Russell Westbrook. Came a great story for a couple of years. Number six, Ray Allen's shot from the corner against the Spurs. Remember that game? I mean, the champagne was out. They were cordoning off the court. It looked like the Spurs were about to win a title. And there's Ray Allen in the corner, getting the pass from Chris Bosh off the offensive rebound, tying the game changing the dynamic. The Miami Heat win that series. They win a couple of titles that year, but that shot, if you're talking about one iconic moment from the last decade in the NBA, it's Ray Allen rising up from the corner in one of the great shots in NBA history and one that changed the course of an NBA Finals. Number five, LeBron James returns to Cleveland and wins an NBA title. I mean, I'm not sure we thought we'd see that. Remember, when he left after the decision, they are burning his jerseys. There is no way he's ever going back. There's Comic Sans letters from the owner ripping him. Everybody in Cleveland was hating LeBron James. Six years later, he is leading them to an NBA title, and he's forever loved in that city. And bringing a title to Cleveland to a region in Northeast Ohio that, well, they didn't think they'd see one because, well, we've seen the Browns play football. They didn't think they were going to see a title. They got one with LeBron James, and it was huge. Number four, Donald Sterling kicked out as an NBA owner in 2014. I think the real question is, why did it take so long? This guy should have been gone long before, but it took leaked tapes and a Machiavellian move by his wife to take control of the team, then sell it from out from under him to make this happen. It was a great thing for the league. It was a great move by Adam Silver to get one of the problems in the league out and turn a major market team into a force. Steve Ballmer buys that team and they are contenders now and one of the model franchises in the NBA. It changed everything and frankly, you just don't see it very often. Owners don't turn on themselves and kick each other out. You have really got to cross a line to get there. Number three, the rise of analytics in the three-point shot. I mean, the NBA game changed dramatically in the last decade, and it's math-based. It's really this simple. Three is worth one and a half times as much as two. And when everybody figured that out, they're like, why are we taking 17-foot, 18-foot jumpers? Let's go six feet back. Maybe we make a few less, but we get more points. And as we get better at that shot, we get more and more points. 
We see it in the game now, 40 threes a game per team. Teams are running to the arc and fast break rather than finishing out in the lane. Not everybody likes to look, but look, the math is pretty simple. Three is worth a lot more than two, and it's not gonna change until the NBA changes the rules. At number two, Kevin Durant goes to the Golden State Warriors and forms a super team that <laughs> wins two in a row. If they stayed healthy, would have had more and was an absolute force of nature. I mean, maybe the best team we've ever seen in the NBA in terms of deep talent with Steph Curry, with Klay Thompson, with Draymond Green, and now Kevin Durant on top of it. Durant gave them the thing they lacked, the reason they lost to Cleveland in 2016. The one guy they could turn to and would get them buckets inside or out, could create his own shot under pressure when everything else broke down. Curry could do some of that. Thompson could do some of that. None of them could do it as well as Kevin Durant. And that made that maybe the best team we've ever seen in the NBA. And number one, at the top of the list, it was frankly right at the start of the decade, the decision and LeBron James going to the Miami Heat. It changed the league in a lot of ways. It's not just that LeBron left Cleveland in a dramatic fashion and there were jerseys being burned and all of that. It was the first NBA super team. He went to play with Chris Bosh and Dwayne Wade and form a team that was going to win six, seven, eight titles. No, it didn't really happen that way, but they did win two and they did change the way we look at the NBA. It was the start of the player empowerment era. They started taking charge of where they were gonna play and who they were gonna play with. And we've seen that up until last summer with Kawhi Leonard and Paul George. That move, that decision by LeBron James changed everything in the NBA, not only for that decade, but also going forward.